Well, Shalom, most of you all have realized that um, these straw men are actually depicting the parable of the Good Samaritan, who the, the Pharisees and Sadducees just walked past. And um, for those of you who are actually told that the Pharisees and Sadducees kept the law, um, you must have truly missed the point of why Christ came. Okay, um, Christ came so that you could understand the law through the Holy Spirit and it's very important how we interpret God's commandments as we've just read out this is going to be sort of midway many of these commandments are repeated and I believe that there are many things about God that you have to read between the lines when you're reading the Bible which are in fact not really touched on <clears throat> in the law so um, we're going to start now about the sabbatical and jubilee years which again are very important um, to realize that uh, there is a, a bigger scale uh, of things is a seven day cycle and then there are sabbatical cycles, yearly cycles and perhaps even going into millennia in which Christ will return at the millennial reign and the dead shall be raised and that is the millennium which we're coming into right now as the Apostle Peter wrote about that um, a day equals a thousand years in God's sight, and a thousand years is like a day. Because God sees all and knows all, everything at once. And um, that he's even active on the Sabbath days and Lord of the Sabbath, where he does heal. And he, he does pay attention to um, our prayers, even on this, the Sabbath, in which we got to even go out and proclaim his words during a Sabbath, because he is our Sabbath rest. This is another part of the ministry that the, the Pharisees just didn't understand. They just thought it was all about work, collecting money. But um, when you're truly born again, um, a lot of people say that um, Jesus is your rest. Well, that's true. If you truly are born again, then you, you're, you're living without the parameters um, of this um, universe. You know, you're actually, as Christ is in heaven, you are on the earth but you should make sure that you're still being led by the Holy Spirit not to work on Sabbath days and that the work that you do do will glorify God every day and that we're basically when you're born again you will and praise God every single day okay so it's, it's never about when a Sabbath is so you can open your mouth and praise God you do that every single day every moment um, you offer praise and thanks to God um, no matter what is going on around you now um, that's called real joy by the way that's not joy which is connected with this world but it's an unworldly joy let's get straight into these next laws to let the land lie follow in the sabbatical year Exodus 23 11 Leviticus 25 2 to cease from tilling the land in the sabbatical year Exodus 23 11 not to till the ground in a sabbatical year Leviticus 25 4 not to do any work on the trees in the sabbatical year, Leviticus 25.4. Not to reap the aftermath that grows in the sabbatical year in the same way as it's reaped in other years, Leviticus 25.5. Not to gather the fruit of the tree in the sabbatical year the same way it's gathered in other years, Leviticus 25.5. To sound the ram's horn in the sabbatical year, Leviticus 25.9. To release debts in the seventh year, Deuteronomy 15.2. Nod to demand return of a loan after the sabbatical year has passed, Deuteronomy 15.2. Nod to refrain from making a loan to a poor man because of the release of loans in a sabbatical year, Deuteronomy 15.9. To assemble the people to hear the Torah at the close of the seventh year, Deuteronomy 31.12. To count the years of the Jubilee by years by the cycles of seven years, Leviticus 25.8. To keep the Jubilee year holy by resting and letting the land lie fallow, Leviticus 25.10. Not to cultivate the soil, nor do any work on the trees in the Jubilee year, Leviticus 25.11. Not to reap the aftermath of the field that grew of itself in the Jubilee year, in the same way as in other years, Leviticus 25.11. Not to gather the fruit of the tree in the Jubilee year, in the same way as in other years, Leviticus 25.11. To grant redemption to the land in the Jubilee year, Leviticus 25:24. Okay, now we're going to look at the court and judicial procedure to appoint judges and officers in every community of Israel, Deuteronomy 16:18. 18. 
not to appoint as a judge a person who is not well versed in the laws of the Torah, even if he is expert in other branches of knowledge, Deuteronomy 1.17, to adjudicate cases of purchase and sale, Leviticus 25.14, to judge cases of liability of a paid depository, Exodus 22.9, to adjudicate cases of loss for which a gratuitous borrower is liable, Exodus 22, 13-14. Um, to adjudicate cases of inheritances, Numbers 27, 8-11. Um, cases of damage caused by uncovered pit, Exodus 21, 34 Injuries caused by beasts, Exodus 21, 36 Damage caused by trespass of cattle, Exodus 22, 4. Um, caused by fire, Exodus 22.5 Damage caused by gratuitous depository, Exodus 22.67 Other cases between a plaintiff and a defendant, Exodus 22.8 Not to curse a judge, Exodus 22.27 That one who possesses evidence shall testify in court, Leviticus 5.1 That's actually called a Queen's Bench, but that's basically been taken over by corporate law nowadays not to testify falsely, Exodus 20.13 That witness who has testified in a capital case shall not lay down the law in that particular case, Numbers 35.30 That a transgressor shall not testify, Exodus 23.1 That the court shall not accept the testimony of a close relative of the defendant in matters of capital punishment, Deuteronomy 24.16 Not to hear one of the parties to um, suit in the absence of the other party. Um, Exodus 23.1 To examine witnesses thoroughly. Deuteronomy 13.15 Not to decide a case on the evidence of a single witness. Deuteronomy 19.15 To give a decision according to the ma um, majority when there is a difference of opinion among the members of the Sanhedrin as to matters of law. Exodus 23.2 now, all of these, of course, have been um, were, were bro broken. Um, most of the Pharisees, I think, um, weren't in favour of crucifying Christ, but it was a kangaroo court again. We saw that. The Pharisees have broken these laws many times, okay, and they will do in the future as well. Not to decide in capital cases according to the view of the majority when those who are for condemnation exceed by one only. Those who are for acquittal, Exodus 23.2 That in a capital case, one who has argued for acquittal shall not later on argue for condemnation, Exodus 23.2 To treat parties in a litigation with equal impartiality, Leviticus 19.15 Not to render iniquitous decisions, Leviticus 19.15 not to favour a greater man when trying a case, Leviticus 19.15 Not to take a bribe, Exodus 23.8 Not to be afraid of a bad man when trying a case, Deuteronomy 1.17 Not to be moved in a trying case by the poverty of one of the parties, Exodus 23.3, Leviticus 19.15 Not to prevent the judgment of strangers or orphans, Deuteronomy 24.17 not to pervert the judgment of a sinner, a, per, a person poor in fulfilment of commandments, Exodus 23.6. Not to render a um, decision on one's personal opinion, but only on the evidence of two witnesses who saw what actuality occurred, Exodus 23.7. Not to execute one guilty of a capital offence before he has stood his trial, Numbers 35.12. To accept the rulings of every Supreme Court in Israel, Deuteronomy 17.11. Not to rebel against the orders of the court, Deuteronomy 17.11. Okay, the next set of laws is to do with injuries and damages. To make a parapet for your roof, Deuteronomy 22.8. Not to leave something that might cause hurt, Deuteronomy 22.8. To save the pursued even at the cost of the life of the pursuer, Deuteronomy 25.12. Not to spare a pursuer, but he has to be slain before he reaches the pursued and slays the latter, or uncovers his nakedness, Deuteronomy 25.12. Next is property and property rights. Not to sell a field in the land of Israel in perpetuity, um, Leviticus 25.23.
not to change the character of the open land about the cities of the Levites of their fields, not to sell it in perpetuity, but it may be redeemed at any time. Leviticus 25.34 That the houses sold within a walled city may be redeemed within a year. Leviticus 25.29 Not to remove landmarks, property boundaries. Deuteronomy 19.14 not to swear falsely in denial of another's property rights, Leviticus 19.11. Not to deny falsely another's property rights, Leviticus 19.11. Not to settle in the land of Egypt, Deuteronomy 17.16. Not to steal personal property, Leviticus 19.11. To restore that which was took by robbery, Leviticus 5.23. To return lost property, Deuteronomy 22.1. Not to pretend not to have seen lost property to avoid the obligation of returning it Deuteronomy 22 3 ok next is the criminal laws not to slay an innocent person Exodus 20 13 not to kidnap any person of Israel Exodus 20 13 um, not to rob by violence Leviticus 19 13 not to defraud Leviticus 19 13 not to covet what belongs to another Exodus 20 14 not to crave something that belongs to another, Deuteronomy 5.18 Not to indulge in evil thoughts and sights, Numbers 15.39 Punishment and Restitution That the court shall pass sentence of death by decapitation with the sword, Exodus 21.20, Leviticus 26.25 um, Sentence death of strangulation, Leviticus 20.10 Death by a burning with fire, Leviticus 20.14 death by stoning, Deuteronomy 22-24, to hang the dead body of one who has incurred that penalty, Deuteronomy 21-22, that the dead body of an executed criminal shall not remain hanging on the tree overnight, Deuteronomy 21-23, to enter the executed on the day of execution, Deuteronomy 21-23, not to accept ransom from a murderer, Numbers 35-31, to exile one who committed accidental homicide, Numbers 3525, establish six cities of refuge um, for accidental homicide, Deuteronomy 19.3, not to accept a ransom from a accidental homicide so as to relieve him from exile, Numbers 3532, to decapitate the heifer in the manner prescribed in an expiation of a murder on the road, the perpetrator of which remained undiscovered, Deuteronomy 21.4, not to plough or sow the rough valley in which a heifer's neck was broken, Deuteronomy 21.4, to adjudge a thief to pay compensation or, in certain cases, suffer death, Exodus 21.16, Exodus 21.37, Exodus 22.1. That he who inflicts a bodily injury shall pay monetary compensation, Exodus 21, 18 and 19, to impose a penalty of 50 shekels upon the seducer of an unbetrothed virgin and enforce the other rules in connection with the case, Exodus 22, 15 to 16, that the violator of an unbetrothed virgin shall marry her, Deuteronomy 22, 20, 29, that one who has raped a damsel and has then, in accordance with the law, married her, may not divorce her, Deuteronomy 22.29, not to inflict punishment on Shabbat, Exodus 35.3, because some punishments were inflicted by fire, to punish the wicked by the infliction of stripes, Deuteronomy 25.2, not to exceed the statutory number of stripes laid on one who has incurred that punishment, Deuteronomy 25.3, and proclation not to strike anyone, not to spare the offender in imposing the prescribed penalties on one who has caused damage, Deuteronomy 19.13, to do unto false witnesses as they had purpose to do to the accused, Deuteronomy 19.19, not to punish anyone who has committed an offence under duress. Deuteronomy 22.26 In Les Miserables, when the thief is handed grace by the pastor when he's been caught thieving, it's a little bit like us through the blood of Christ. we got to forgive those um, and cut them a break sometimes, but we got to actually get the things back as well from Satan. 
knowing that he's going to pay at least up to seven times more back. Check Proverbs 6.31. So let's rejoice.